Now that we're focusing on the DDL statements, such as alter, create, and so on, we want to segue into discussing the various data types that are supported by MySQL. There are a plethora of data types that are supported, and they can be lumped into several categories, including numeric, strings, date times, and so on. Let's open a shell. And we're going to begin by discussing numeric data types, since they are commonly found throughout your table structures. We'll launch gedit. This will bring up a most recent session of our text file. And we just want to seg segue for a little bit. We showed you alter table, how easy it is to rename and affect changes to tables. But now we want to discuss common data types. And we'll begin the discussion by venturing into numeric types. There are many numeric types depending on your storage requirements. They range from tiny integer to small integer, medium integer, all the way up to doubles, which includes double precision. But you need to know when to use these different data types when defining your databases. In our shell window, we'll connect to the MySQL instance and we're going to end up creating a new table after we discuss some of the limitations of the different field types or numeric field types. Let's connect as root to the local host, which will prompt us for a password. And once in, we'll execute a show databases. Pretty much any of the databases that are defined have field types that we can use as a reference. For example, if we were to use the contact database and execute a show tables, you'll see that there are multiple tables or two tables defined. Describe for either one of them. Let's take a look at people two, for example, since we've altered this table. Shows an auto incremented column labeled ID, which is set to integer 10, unsigned. It doesn't accept nulls, and it is the primary key, and the default is null, which really means to auto-increment the value. But what does all of this mean within the context of storage requirements and numeric types supported by MySQL? Well, this means as follows. Integer 10 simply means that the type of numeric value that can be stored in this particular column must be one integer and with a predetermined range and when you see unsigned this means that negative values are not allowed in the column so only non-negative or positive values are allowed to be stored in the column that's described using unsigned it makes perfect sense because auto incremented columns are always positive beginning usually with a value of one or a predetermined or predefined value by the administrator and incrementing automatically as you insert records into the table. So again, when you see integer 10 followed by unsigned and some other descriptors, but in this case just unsigned, it means that non-negative values can be stored and the 10 next to integer doesn't mean that you can store values with 10 digits or precision of 10 digits. It simply means that the width of the column when returning information within the column will show 10 places to hold the values. So that leads us to discussion of what MySQL will store for each of the numeric data types. Beginning with tinyint, so we're going to list each one of them and we'll use uppercase to indicate the name of the numeric data type. Tinyint when in unsigned mode and for the most part we're focusing on numeric values that are in unsigned mode. Seldom do you have the requirement to store signed values. So we're focusing on unsigned values or in other words non-negative values. The tinyint data type which you can apply to a column and we'll show you momentarily will accept an unsigned range which is equivalent to 8 bits or 0 through 255. So we'll specify this as an 8-bit field, which means that you can insert values from 0 through 255, any combination from 0 through 255, or any value within the range of 0 through 255 can be stored in the column. Anything outside of this range will not be stored or preserved. For example, if you insert a value that's higher than 255, and you'll see, such as 256, MySQL will simply store 255, which means that you will lose accuracy and potentially corrupt your data. So it's very important that you pick 
the precise data types, especially when dealing with integers, but equally as important when dealing with strings, binary data, and so on. And there are column types for all sorts of data, but again, we're focusing on integer types. So for now, we just want to memorize these ranges. Now, by the way, the signed range for this particular field type, which is the tiny integer, so the signed range is roughly half when fa including or factoring in negative values. So you can store usually values within a range of negative 127 all the way up to 128 positive. That would be the signed range. It's usually halfway, so if a column can store 8 bits worth of information, 0 through 255, usually it can store half as much for signed values. Half to represent the negative values, and half to represent the positive values. So we won't list the signed range values for each of these column types. So if you have a storage requirement that should not exceed the value 0 through 255, and there may, may very well be cases such as age, for example. If you're storing age not as a date column, but perhaps as just an integer, well, no one's going to live to 255 unless there are some serious changes in the healthcare system that permits us to live that long, and as a result, we would then need to change all our MySQL column types. But at that point, maybe TinyInt would have grown to accommodate larger numbers of bits, perhaps 12, 16, 32, etc. But as it stands, TinyInt will only store 8 bits worth of information, signed or unsigned, and when unsigned, will store the value 0 through 255. The next type is called the small int. It sounds small, and relatively speaking it is, but based on today's gobs or loads of data, it really is small. It doesn't store much information. Small int in unsigned mode is based on a storage range of 16 bits, or 2 to the 16th, which means it'll store values of 0 through 65,535, or 16 bits. This is the equivalent of six, a 16-bit field, and these are the ranges that it'll support. And again, roughly half that is allocated when you switch to signed mode. So if you need to st store signed values, then pretty much cut this number in half, somewhere in the ballpark of 32,700 plus on either side of the number line, negative or positive. That's a small int. So again, if your requirement exceeds 8 bits or 255, then perhaps small int is the way to go, providing that your requirement does not exceed the upper limit, which in, in unsigned mode is 65535. The next numeric type is called the medium int. And the medium integer is based on a 24-bit value, which means it'll store up to over 16 million values. So just think about your VGA or your monitor, for example, your display card when you execute properties of the screen, especially within a Windows environment. So you go properties of the screen, and somewhere within the setup you take a look at the settings for the video card, including resolution and number of colors. You generally see values that correspond to the bits, 8 bits, 16 bits, as well as 24 bits. Those are usually the options that you see and as a result you can equate them because they're just bit values so looking at what we have here the medium integer will store values based on a 24 bit range which means zero this is again for unsigned values non-negative values or simply positive values zero through sixteen million seven 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 two one five or twenty four bits unsigned of course and we should probably mention here that these represent unsigned it's very important because when you define the fields you will use the unsigned keyword to indicate unless you use another keyword such as auto increment which immediately or defaults to using unsigned because the auto incrementing field can only be a positive value so let's move on if your storage requirements exceed 24 bits or slightly under 17 million values, then you may want to, and this is quite possible, let's say you have an auto-incremented field for a particular table structure, but the table structure contains more than 16 plus or 16.7 million or 16.8 million rows, then you very well may need a larger data structure 
and certainly MySQL provides a value or a field that will support larger than medium int. That value is considered int. If we just simply go with int, the default int, in an unsigned range, we can store values from 0 through over 4 billion or based on a 32 bit range. So 0 through 429. In fact, you don't need to memorize these numbers just from a shell. Let's show you how easy it is. Just launch the, if you're within Linux, launch the GNOME calculator. If you're within a KDE desktop, launch the KCalc or within Windows, launch calculator. Jump over to scientific mode so that we can see the powers and just execute 2, for example. Let's find that 2xy32 to get the full range supported by 32 bit values. And this will tell you the largest number you can place into an integer field. It's actually 295, but this is close enough. So let's just paste this in and change it to 295. So you'll find, because 0 is a value, you'll find that in an integer field you can store values from 0 through slightly over 4 billion or based on a 32-bit range. So these are some of the values that we can store. And there is yet another type. It's called big int. If for some reason your column needs to store larger values, no problem. MySQL has a type called big int. Big int is based on a 64-bit range. And we won't even list the value here. We could if we use the calculator, of course. Let's just clear screen and execute 2xy64 and copy the value that's returned. And again, this is all based on an unsigned range. If it's signed, it's half this, roughly. So 0 through this large value, or based on 64-bit values, is your range for numeric integers stored within this particular column. Next, we're going to continue discussing the integer types and perform some tests within MySQL using tinyint. So let's continue focusing on the various numeric integer types that are supported by MySQL. So as mentioned, tinyint supports 8-bit values, small int 16-bit, medium int 24 bits, int or just plain old integer 32 bits, and big integer 64 bits, which should serve most needs, even for columns with billions of, or for rows that is, for, for tables with billions of rows or records. There are still other types that may be of interest, numeric types. For example, float. We can use float with precisions all the way up to 53 digits. When we define a float value with pre precision up to 24 digits, so up to 24 digits, it's considered as a single precision value or field and as a result f the float field requires 32 bits for storage so it uses in this case 32 bits for, th for storage whereas if we need higher or a greater degree of precision such as 25 through 53 digits this is considered double precision and will occupy 64 bits of storage. Now the MySQL documentation tends to list the storage requirements in bytes. Simply convert all the values that we've mentioned thus far to the byte equivalents. For example, tinyint would require one byte. Smallint would require two bytes. And three bytes for mediumint so that you can compare them one for one integer would require 4 bytes, big integer which is a 64 bit base value would require 8 bytes or 8 times 8 since 1 bit equals or 8 bits that is equals 1 byte so this would require 8 bytes of storage and again this is actual storage and when you add it all up We'll be, you'll be able to determine how much storage overall based on your projections for the table structure or the full database structure you'll be able to base how much storage is required on the file system but you when setting up your database system know how much storage is available you need to be able to forecast how much storage will be required for a given database or a set of, of databases 
and you should also aim to use the appropriate column types or the appropriate field types wherever possible when dealing with numeric values pick precisely the type that you need and in the event that your forecast doesn't meet the the growth then you can simply expand or alter the table and expand it to a larger value for example let's say you provision using small int but you're approaching 65,000 as a value that's stored within that particular column then if you see the need to store a larger value larger than the top limit of the small int range then you could use the alter table statement to alter the column from small to medium int without losing any of the values but be careful when going in the reverse direction because you are likely to truncate and lose values so when going from a larger to a smaller such as medium int to small int you may lose values if any large values are stored it's always easy to go from smaller to bigger so float requires four bytes however float with double precision or 25 to 53 digits requires eight bytes for storage and yet there are still other types for storage that can be used for numeric values including double double requires 64 bits or eight bytes for storage and double values tend to store values to the left and to the right of the decimal point with a high level of precision but there is rounding that takes place so if you do need to preserve exact digits such as in salary information or in amounts paid for accounts or accounting type applications you could consider using decimal integer or decimal numeric type that is and with the decimal numeric type you can specify the total number of digits specified by M as well as the total number of digits after the decimal point indicated by D so the syntax that you'll see or the form decimal parentheses M comma D parentheses simply means the total number of digits represented by M that the decimal value can hold so let's say for a five figure salary five for example and the D indicates how many digits after the decimal point and the decimal column will usually occupy n number of bytes usually four to eight bytes so usually four to eight bytes for storage and another numeric type is the bit type the bit type can actually store bit based values bit based values are based on binary values of one or zero so you can store in a bit based column binary values for example ie the value for 128 would resemble the following a one followed by seven zeros this would be a bit value that could be stored inside of a bit column or a bit field type which would represent in decimal 128 and for any bit base value you could store it in a bit base column so these are ten types that we've covered that are numeric now we want to show you how using the wrong numeric type could have negative impacts on the data that's stored within a particular column causing corruption very simple example for example within our table structure let's take a look at the tables that are within the contact database we have people and people too let's go ahead and define an entirely new table and we'll define it with simply one column a column to represent tiny int or a tiny int value so our task is to for this particular section is to exceed the limits or the limits of a tiny int field type and evaluate results so this requires defining a table with a column or altering an existing table with the appropriate column in order to define this new table we'll simply execute a create table statement which we're going to look at in more detail but first we want to spend time discussing the types that apply to numeric strings dates and so on then going on to create but we can create a simple table so the first the thing we'll do is create table we'll give it a name of numeric one because we're testing numeric 
types and we'll describe the field, the, the loan field that we will define between the parentheses as a field called ID and we'll give it a type of tiny int and we'll also specify that it be unsigned otherwise if it's signed we can only store half of the positive values or the upper limit is shifted when it's signed to incorporate or include negative and positive values whereas when it's unsigned the values must be positive so zero through the upper limit so let's create this table and then insert values into the table so step two insert values into the ID column let's copy the create table statement for numeric one and paste it into the MySQL terminal monitor window and this will create a new table called numeric one let's show tables again there it is and if we describe it you'll see that it contains one column momentarily let's describe numeric one it contains one column ID of type tiny int the three that you see next to the tiny int type is simply the width in which values are displayed when you retrieve results from the column but has no effect on what's actually stored within the column tiny int determines the upper limit of the value that can be stored in the column so tiny int means exactly that it'll store values on the plus side or on the unsigned side of 0 through 255 however in terms of width the MySQL DBMS will pad the results, left pad the results so that they're presented uniformly but has no effect upon what values can actually be stored in the column that's determined by the actual numeric field type or by the field type so we could define a tiny int field type for example which will display a width of 5 or 10 and will be padded, left padded so that the results look uniform when outputted but more on that later on. So let's insert some values into this particular column. In order to do so, we'll use an insert statement or a DML statement, a data manipulation language statement. And we will insert into numeric one, which is the name of the table. And we'll just use a set statement to set ID equal to the initial value that we'd like to insert, followed by a select star from numeric one to witness the results. Let's return to the terminal monitor and execute our statement. Let's just get rid of any leading spaces here. And notice one was stored, no big deal. Nothing out of the ordinary. The value was stored and we can continue inserting values. Let's try 10 and we'll just keep increasing the value here by an order of magnitude. We specified zero inadvertently. 10 was stored properly. Let's go with 100. 100 will be stored properly because again tiny int facilitates 0 through 255 and it is an unsigned column so as a result don't expect to be able to store negative values in it or assigned values in it so let's continue this time we're gonna try the value the upper limit which is 255 and you'll see that it's stored now back to what we described earlier which was that if you exceed the upper limit of a given field type MySQL will simply store that upper limit but not the value specified so let's go ahead and just go one number over by trying to store 256 and as you can see 256 was not stored because tinyint cannot store higher than 255 it's an 8-bit based field let's try to take it to a higher value let's store 1000 for example and see how much the MySQL DBMS will retain. Notice it simply stores the whole value. So now the difference between 100 and 255 being 745 has been lost. So we've lost 745 digits or portions of the value. So it's no longer the same value that we inserted. Let's try to insert something even higher. Let's go with 2550 still isn't stored so we have exceeded the upper limits and we can't store it anything higher now you may be wondering what if we were to alter the table to change this particular column to be a small int column versus a tiny int column would it actually retain or represent the proper values well let's go ahead and run an alter table statement to see how that will work out so our next task is to alter the ID column 
to store small int values. And we'll do so by executing alter table. In this case, the name of the table is numeric one. And we want to change. We don't want to add. We don't want to rename the name of the, the, the column or the table. We just want to change an existing column from one type to another. Or if we wanted to preserve the tiny int, we could add a new column. We could call it ID2, for example. Alter table numeric one add ID2. This would preserve the original column and we'll define it as small int. The display can be whatever we want it to be but it'll default to its default which you'll see momentarily. And This will add the new column for us called ID number two. Then we'll attempt to insert larger values into it. So it's alt to table numeric one and now we've added a new column called ID two. Let's describe numeric one and you'll see that it now contains a new column of type small int and it'll display a width of six placeholders and as you know small int will store values from zero through six five five three five it makes perfect sense for it to display a width of six because if you notice the upper limit sixty five five three five represents basically five values and because it's left padded there's only one leading zero to pad all values for uniformity in terms of display. So now we can store values up to 16 bits in length and let's attempt to insert into this particular column some large values. So we'll insert into ID2 2550 and then select star and notice in ID2 we're able to store it. We could insert into both. Let's set ID this is a great test having both columns of different types. We'll set ID equal to the same values that we attempt to place into ID2. So let's take it up, take it up another level. We'll insert or attempt to insert 25,550. And in ID2, we'll just add a 5 so that it's equivalent. And notice that ID2 preserved the 25,550, but ID has not because its upper limit is 255. Let's attempt to store an even larger value. Let's go with 255,550 and ditto for ID2. And notice that ID2 stored an upper limit of 32,767. Now the reason why the upper limit is 32,767 should be clear. Let's execute a describe against the numeric table and you'll see and you'll see that this particular numeric one that is this particular column is signed you know that it's signed because it doesn't say unsigned and if it's signed then we'll only store roughly half of the value so in this case we're using small int but it's signed so we can't achieve the upper limits so we would have to execute an alter statement to either change or add a new column let's go ahead and add a new column so we're going to alter and this time we're going to add ID 3 it too will be small int, but we want to specify specifically on sign to indicate that it should store only non-negative values. So let's alter it, followed by a describe numeric one. And now notice that small the small int type for ID three is unsigned and it has been adjusted to five. Now the six before made sense. Why? Because if you stored an unsigned or signed value that is with a leading negative symbol, then you want to see that leading negative symbol. And that would be the sixth place. Whereas with small int, values can only be five places, up to sixty five five three five. So let's attempt to insert some values into this particular setup. So in ID two we'll set it to two hundred and fifty five thousand five hundred and fifty and then for ID 3 we'll set it to the same value 255,550 and watch the results the upper limit has been reached 65,535 because it is unsigned which leads us to adding yet another column let's go ahead and add alter table and add an ID 4 column we'll make this particular column medium int and you see where we're going with this. We're just increasing the sizes to show you how MySQL will deal with the data that it receives for a given column. 
so we'll add ID 4 it's unsigned and then we'll describe it now we have ID 4 which happens to be unsigned and its width is 8 then let's include in ID 4 the same value so ID 4 will be equal to 255550 and let's see what happens notice ID 4 stores it nicely because ID 4 is a medium mint field which can store values up to 16,777,000 plus. So it's 24-bit based, stores the upper limits, no problems. Now we could insert a much larger value right under the limit, for example. Let's go with, for ID 4, 16,777,214. And notice it stores it. Let's take it up to 16 and notice it tops out at 15. So these column types for numeric integers are precise. You must use the exact types. When storing salary information or money related information, consider using decimal or numeric and set the precisions to whatever you need, such as 6, 5, 7, 8, whatever numbers or your upper limits happen to be, followed by a decimal number of decimal places after that MySQL is to allow the user to store values. For example, let's say we wanted to define a column and we'll go with type decimal with a maximum number of characters or values that is as six permitting two values or two placeholders after the decimal point for precision. This would allow us a sort of range to store a salary with up to six total values. Let's take it up to seven so we can store more. So we'll add a column, we'll call it salary, and we'll take a look at it momentarily. We'll describe it after we've added it. Then let's describe numeric one, and you'll see that there's a new column called salary. It's of type decimal, seven comma two or m comma d, the maximum number of values, seven, the maximum number of values after the decimal point too. So if we do include values after the decimal point, for example, then the most number of values that can be stored to the left of the decimal point would be five. So five plus two, because the total number of values in the column equates to the first value that you see here, the first argument, which is seven. Let's attempt to insert a value into it. So we've been inserting. Now we want to insert into salary a salary of let's go if 99,000 and not specify a, a trailing value notice that 99,000 is accurately reflected with two trailing zeros 99 and three zeros is equivalent to five digits plus the two after and from the description we know that we can store a total of seven digits what if we were to store a salary of 100,000 let's see what happens Notice, we approach the limit, which is $99,999.99. Precision is 7, 2, which means, or the description for this particular field is 7, 2, which means a maximum of 7 digits in the column. So if you want to store higher salaries, well, then you need to add some more flexibility into the column. Let's go with salary 2. Perhaps we'll call this salary for high earners, and we'll store up to nine values, or nine digits. And this particular command will be executed, followed by a describe numeric one. And now we have salary two, which will store nine comma two. So let's perf perform that insert again. Let's add into salary two a salary of one hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars notice it's stored accurately additionally what if we were to specify a higher salary let's go with eight hundred and ninety nine thousand dollars nine hundred and ninety nine dot fifty cents it stores it if you count it we're still within the range the total number of values that can be stored in this particular column we've set it to a total of nine which means if we count each of these digits one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight. We still have one value left, which means we can place a really high earner in. Let's go with a salary of 1.5 million, so 1 million five hundred thousand and fifty cents, and it stores it. How about increasing the person's salary to 10 million or 15 million just by adding another zero, followed by 50 cents? Doesn't do it. It allows the user to make a salary of 9.999 million and 99 cents. So just increase the precision and you can store more results. It's pretty easy, but there are different numeric integer types. We just want to spend two sections covering these numeric types. Now there are other types we need to look at, such as string types as well as date types. We're going to focus on those next.